How does a man with 75 cents in his pocket create an empire worth $250 million? I'm Bhat Khadat, you're with the Mojo Story. Our focus today is on a very, very interesting newsmaker. We'll be speaking shortly to Manu Patolia, who's of course a leading businessman, philanthropist, and a very, very well-known voice from India who went to the United States of America, as I said, with 75 cents in his pocket. He faced many, many obstacles, but he fulfilled his dream of becoming a civil engineer. And then from there, there was no looking back. His memoirs are now captured in a new book that chronicles this amazing journey. The book captures how Manu Patolia's life went from a small village in Gujarat to, in a sense, being under the arc lights in the United States of America. Through this book, we will be speaking to Mr. Patolia on what advice he would have for young people today who may feel disheartened, who feel nothing is going their way, who feel that success will never be theirs. This is a story of somebody who has seen enormous hardship and come from very, very modest means to today becoming wealthy, influential, and he's here to tell his story in his own words. Let's go across now to Manubhai Patolia, who's joining us from California today. Uh, I should say good morning uh, to you because it's early morning, your time, uh, Manubhai. Uh, tell us a little bit first, before we come to your reaching the United States of America, about Gujarat. And what do you remember about the village that you grew up in? Because your book, after all, is from the village to the world. So, pehle gaon ki baat karte hai. Tell us about that village. Tell us about your yeah. early years. Well, my name is Manu Patolia, and um, I was born in a small village called Taroda, which is uh, on the bank of the river Satruji. It was a very beautiful, serene environment. I had a very, very good life in my growing up. My parents provided as well. My father wasn't rich, but uh, he had, uh, you know, at least basic things that uh, we can have a happy life. Until I got uh, my fifth grade, there is some family calamities came and things had changed a little bit. But uh, otherwise, everything was fine until I came to America. And when I landed in America at the time, unfortunately, the guy who person who was going to give me money, he did not have the money. So I end up with a 75 cents in my pocket. And my story. Did you always started... know? Did you always your story starts there and we'll come to it. But did you always know as a young boy in that Gujarat village that you wanted to go to America? How did you think of America? Well, I was the first of all, I wasn't knowing anything about America. And my my dream was to get my BS degree. And when I was in my MG Science Institute to get uh, my, you know, to get into the degree course, at the time there was not too many engineering colleges, so it was very competitive. I got 59% and admission in the course ended at uh, 60%. So I was 1% short. So only thing I have no choice but to go somewhere to get my degree. Either I settle with what I got or I get my degree. So that's why I came to America to get my BS degree. And what did this degree mean to you? We're seeing an image of that degree. And, you know, when you got that degree, what was the first thing you thought of it? Yeah, I was so thrilled to have the degree because that was my dream from the, my childhood that I want to become a contractor. And to become a contractor, I have to have a, a BS degree in engineering, civil engineering. And that's why somehow it, BS was been so so desperately I wanted. So there's nothing but I have to come to America to get my de BS degree. I came only for 27 months. I promised my mom I'll be back in 27 months after I get my degree. And then I got my MS and all this thing. I went back to set up my own company. But uh, that was uh, too many rights and uh, no Nirman rights. And coming back from uh, from India and compare India and the uh, USA at, at the time. So it was a, you know, I prefer to stay and I, mean, I decided to stay in America after that. But, but tell me, point. when you had those 75 cents in your pocket, what did you do? How did you manage? How did you live day to day 
in that time when you were pursuing your degree, the person who promised you money didn't deliver on that promise. How did you live? Well, I, you know, it, somebody had to read my story <laughs> to get all the way there. But it was there yeah. when I landed, when so I put my We want you to tell us yeah. a little bit about it, yes. What is that? What did you I say? said that story is, of course, in your book, From the Village to the World. There's the book cover that you can see. But we want you to tell us a little bit about how you managed to our audience on those 75 cents. Yeah, I, I was at this time, I had very little money in my pocket, only 75 cents. And I wasn't knowing, but God willing, things work. I can call it a miracle. And I had a, a very, you know, strong faith in my Lord Swaminarayan. And he he found a way for me. Every every difficulties came, and uh, seventy five cents. When I put a bag in in uh, YMCA, it's hard to describe what goes in your mind when you have seventy five cents in pocket and uh, you are in a foreign country. You don't know anybody here, so that was a something that you know hard to describe. But uh, God willing, it everything worked out well. From there, I were you, were you scared at that time? Were you scared? I because of uh, I think because of my faith in God, I had no fear. Never had any fear, and sometimes so somehow, if I had, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You're if, saying if, you had no I, fear because of your fear, I, your belief in God. If I had to be on the street or without money or become homeless <laughs> in America, then I would have been. But unfortunately. It, things happen it, as it uh, trouble came, but it went uh, in the right order right away. So I didn't experience that difficulty. Now, tell us to people who may be struggling, and I'll get to, of course, the success part of your story in a moment, but to people who may be struggling, who have very tough days when they're starting out, who sometimes worry about the future, what's the one piece of advice you would give them from your own life story? I, I, tell me again, I don't, I don't get it. What is the one advice? What is the one advice? What could young people learn from your life? People who, you know, who don't get success immediately, who are going through hardship. What could they learn from your life? They should learn, you know, have a, you know, first of all, they should be strong enough. Decide much earlier. I decided, as I decided my, my, what I want to be in my early life, when I was in sixth grade. To become a contractor so it gave me as, as i grew further i start keep preparing for my contract contractor company anything i see the magazine ad or something or i meet some contractor or i see somebody how they are doing so i kept building up why did mind. you why did you want to be a contractor but where did that dream come from because I was in, when i was in sixth grade there was a nearby construction of the dam construction i used to go over then i liked the people Many, many, many people, maybe three, four hundred people were working. All the jigger pumps and big equipment, it, it thrilled me. Plus the, plus the, 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 the honor that the, the engineer was getting. They was getting high respect for, you know, I saw that all these things. I thought this is the right thing I want to do. And since then, I never turned back. That was always I wanted to stay and I, I worked for it. All my life. Yes, and you create and you created from that seventy-five cents a two hundred and fifty million dollar empire. But a big part of your success story has been knowing when to exit a business. So you know you even talk about that in your book. So can you talk a little bit about exiting a business? Many people don't get that part right. Exiting a business because uh, what I do always I prepare before I get in the business. I see what are the key point in that business. That I can, I can, uh, if the problem comes or I don't like the business or things happen with it beyond our control, I always can, can, um, can exit from the business. Suppose this business currently I have, what you see over there, I already have a plan before I started the business and how to get out, how to make it happen. And also I prepared all along to be built to sell. That's so you're saying you life. come into businesses before you start a venture or you invest in a venture, you already know when you're going to exit. Right. And also I, I prepared now, suppose yeah, this, the, the current business I have, I'm already prepared when time comes, either build, business builds up certain level because every business has a plateau. Once it reaches yes. there, 
either you act or go to the public and make a long lasting corporation but all now, the all this the... is a very unusual why have you never thought of the second route because like in india there are there are families that have been running the same business for generations but you your business model is built in a way on investing of course smartly but also exiting smartly why have you never wanted to stay on in a business what in america generally i don't know how in america, india but generally in america business the timing changes like a, the you know economy changes time changes environment changes or uh, or technology changes so because of to keep up with the technology all the suppose i want pc board business before and pc board business i sold it because when when russia war was going down and i was prepared from the beginning but when russia war go, went down i said look let's get out because uh, now economy is going to go down for the pc board so once i i i get out within a 6 month whole industry was collapsed what is the longest you stayed in a in a in a venture uh first uh, manufacturing business i stayed 16 years i had two plants flexible and uh, rigid boards and uh, the, the one now i have is just 22 years in this business so, so that's I, not I, so I, short that's not hmm? so short also I yeah, said you don't immediately not. exit also. No, no, immediately I built it up. Suppose I I had a three retail stores before, one by one. Yes. So first store, how I learned this to get out and get prepared for it because first store was very nice neighborhood, all Italian neighborhood. Within a two three years, whole environment changed, all um, all the clientele changed, and went from best to going sliding down. So uh-huh. at that time I sold that business, but it I learned that you know I have to watch the timing. So I complete constantly watch the pulse of the business. I go in a trade shows and see how the people you know how how many people in trade show how they are doing. I talk to the sales people and I keep watch of the pulse of the business is going in the right order. The economy is is, is supporting or technology going high. So my PC board business was doing very well. in 19 say around 1998 and suddenly equipment prices went higher technology went much fast further so yeah. to have a return of return of investment was getting difficult equipment what do you was- think is going to happen to what do you think is going to happen to old style businesses bricks and mortar in the age of artificial intelligence in the age of chat gpt you more than others you, you because you spoken about how technology means that every business can plateau and you have to know when to get out what do you think is going to happen to old style businesses in this age of tech and ai okay ai is coming very quickly within next 5 yes. to 10 years everything will be changed what we see it so at this time i tell my grandchildren my whomever i know and uh, that is just go into ai start learning information technology now we are not in a brick and mortar time now we have to change to the electronic and uh, te- um, you know called um, information technology so we what we see all the you can see all the cars all the uh, you know one day will be uh, household robots will be serving you a tea, um, you know, cup of tea so we have to be yes. prepared and move with the technology yes and i will in I fact will... yes go ahead the sir big... the business i have now i was somebody was asking me yesterday that what will happen to this business uh, the nutritional supplement or pharmaceutical as a pharmaceutical yes. business is a staple business people will get food shelter medicine it's not hmm. going to go uh, change maybe technology change in preparations but everybody will require a medicine and nutritional supplement so that yes, is a, that's, this that's, that's that those are the only businesses human beings will always need food shelter and medicine i think that's right. uh, that's pre- <laughs> that's pretty fair uh, have you ever got sentimentally attached to a business where it's been difficult to exit i don't understand have Tell you ever again. got have you ever got like jaise kehte na lagav ho jata hai have you ever got you know sentimental about something you've built that you don't want to exit 
I I keep my emotion out of the business. So I look at business is a business. So when I sell the business, I have no 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 further you know thinking that okay I lost something or this and this and I I have done the right decision and never think back. So I uh, most people find that very difficult to do to keep their emotion out. What has been the most difficult thing about your journey? When you look back at the hard years, when you look back at the tough years, of course you'll always remember staying in YMCA with seventy-five cents. But what was uh, other than that the most difficult thing about the early years? One one thing I tell all the young young growing up people also that faith in a God is very important. When people have a faith, you know, faith. Suppose say I, I got uh, um, things. What ninety nine percent of the time things doesn't happen the what we want. When it doesn't happen the what we want, at the time you need a support, and I I I got pretty much help of the support by the saints and uh, and the faith. Yes, they say faith can move mountains for that reason. Uh, right. Manu Bhai, tell us this: You came from modest means, right? When you yeah. became wealthy, did you change? Did wealth change you? I have not changed a bit. My thinking, really, my, because I always remember my roots, where I came from. So by remembering yeah. the roots, you never get, uh, you know, the, you you value what you got, and also you yes. care for others. Care for others. What does money mean to you today? What does money mean to you? Money, money is required for everything. Yes. Requires money. Money. I'm not obsessed with money, but I always money came naturally, whatever naturally mm -hmm. with hard work and planning properly. Main part is plan and take decision on timely basis. So things will happen, falls in the right order, and you will get the money. But most important part is how you spend the money. After money comes, many and how do want... you spend it? And how did you decide to spend your money? My money because I I had my I had responsibilities of my family. Family, I, yes. My alma mater where I studied. My I had a and I studied in a Swamin and Gurukul, and uh, that has changed my life. So I won't always yes. wanted to support over there. So I in my my where I born and brought up in that area that surrounding villages. So I established a Gurukul branch in my hometown Taroda, where close to three thousand students are taking part from the forty villages. That gives me great satisfaction that somebody's life has been changed because of I have contributed some. Part of my That's life. wonderful. That's wonderful that you've remained attached yeah. to your roots. How how often do you manage to go back to where you came from? I go every year, once a year at least. And uh, wonderful. I know when I see those, see those kids, I really be, feel feel happy that their life is changed and they they're very smart kids over there. Things has yes. things are much better than what I had. So I I was deprived of many things while while I was growing. My school wasn't that great, but so I yes. wanted to have them better. That's great that you you've given back. You your philanthropy is, uh, yes. of course, chronicled uh, on record. Uh, let me ask you in the end, Manu Bhai. Uh, you know one one thing you learned from your failures. You see, there's a lot people learn from their success. But failures also teach you something. So, at the time in life when something you wanted to do didn't work out, what did your failures teach you? Let me tell you, in a life, we, you know, for me personally, I did everything first time. So I was shooting always in the dark. So yes. I was when failure, failure is on. Whenever it's on, maybe eighty to ninety percent of the time, you don't get what you are expecting. Yes. And your disappointment comes, your failure comes. So on those days, and then make to keep you strong because you, you failing is a is a you consider as a step for forward. Then it can help you there. If you get nervous and you know break down, then you are you lost. So I never yes. have a problem with a failure. I, I first time in my SSC, I I got um, I failed in my English subject. So I didn't. It yes. didn't stop me then. I worked very hard and got it. 
then i got my i remained one percent short of my interest size to get a degree course and I, again i worked hard i came all the way to america to get my my degree but i did not stop so only thing is no don't give up yes once you start that's once you goal, don't give up and keep going if you give up you will be failed failure is not a failure until you give up that's well said Failure is yeah. not failure until you give up. Failure is a step forward. Yeah. Well, Manu Bhai, your life yeah. exemplifies that. It's been caught in your five decades of your in incredible journey from the village to the world, from 75 cents to $250 million in your new book. Yes. Thank you, Manu Bhai, for talking to us. And thank in you. particular, thank you for giving back to your village, to your roots. Right. I think that is something to be applauded. Thank you. God thank bless. You. Take care. It's been great pleasure here yeah, doing that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our work. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Mojo Story and support independent, robust journalism.